Hello there. Happy Monday. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Yeah. Well, man, my kids are home from school this week, so uh, hopefully not too much background noise. We'll be okay. Everybody's canceling school. Crazy things happening. This is happening uh, uh, now in, in USA. Yeah. Yep. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just just starting today for us. Oh, we're on I think we're lockdown too. I mean it's I think well Massachusetts was like no gatherings more than twenty five people or something along mm -hmm. the lines of that. So. Nice. <laughs> we started with that and uh, after two days um, we we lock the the country. <laughs> So <laughs> now, now you're locked down like Italy, something like that. Yeah. What? Sorry? Is it as you're locked down like Italy? Similar? There's no, no, nobody can can go to the streets. Nobody can uh, go to work. Only only essential work services. And uh, uh, well, for uh, well. Uh, Supermarkets and this kind of things. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming for us too. It's coming for People you. Are... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, on Saturday, the Prime Minister announced that they were shutting down every non necessary shops. So, like, everything is closed now. Only pharmacies, uh, and and uh, and grocery stores are, are opened. So no no cinemas, no gyms, nothing. And it looks also tonight the president's gonna do an announcement, and it seems that we will go uh, contained, just like other countries. Uh, but only like only only Paris and the surroundings. Uh, so yeah. So now everyone's rushing to uh, grocery stores to buy <laughs> stuff. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a little bit crazy. It was the same here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they said be, that that's gonna last yeah. 45 days. So. Oh wow. Yeah. Yes. I expect to stay at home two months. Yeah. Okay. Madrid. In Madrid, we have in this moment about uh, five thousand uh, different uh, cases. So it's the the yes, is the the hot place in in Spain is is Madrid in this moment. So. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. All right. Well, I see some notes in the agenda by two different people. I'm not sure who added them, though. Let's see. Is one Sebastian who's not here? Um, the, anybody? The other one anybody is here? me. Yeah. The other one is you. The green. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and get started and read through the notes here. So, yep. Sebastian still has a conflict for a couple more weeks. So we will. See him again later. Uh, to do for next week, figure out a time for developer summit session. Um, does anybody have thoughts on that? I'm not sure I do. I'm assuming this is just a virtual get together. Um, so I guess if you have thoughts on that, I can put some notes in that other pad. All right, it was the, the replacement then, or what's that? Yeah. Well, it's uh, just because a uh, meeting that we have this, this morning, okay? Well, it seems that uh, with both orchestrators, the uh, OSD, uh, the OSD removed 
is uh, is uh, implemented what well, well not not in rook but it's something that probably we should uh, well uh, return to to life i think that uh, well i think that uh, it's good to to have the possibility okay but uh, there is a, a couple of use cases for osd uh, removal one of these is the replacement and to to use the uh, well to re, in order to reuse the osd id and uh, well, I, I don't I don't know what what is the the real use case behind behind this uh, use case. So if uh, somebody can explain it or remember why why uh, this is needed, okay. And uh, also important uh, if it is something that is going to be implemented. So the question is why we need to replace the OSD or reuse the OSD ID. Why, why, uh, why this use case is is needed? Or uh, I don't know. Uh, it has sense to to have this use case to reuse the OSD ID. Is this correct? So, so as I understand it, if we can reuse the OSD ID on the same node when we replace a disk, that there will be less data movement in you know due to crush. And and so it would optimize data movement and, and do less data movement. Um, now, how critical that is um, of a scenario, it, it's a hard thing to solve, at least on the Rook side, it's not clear to me how we can replace that OSD on the, you know, and make sure it's on the same node and things use the same ID. Um, so it's a hard problem to solve. I'm not sure how to do that yet. So if we can not worry about it and people can live with the data movement, I guess that's kind of where my mind is right now. But the other people, other people have views on that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And uh, yeah. in any case, it's something that uh, should be completely transparent to the final user. Transparent about which thing? The, Transparent the for ID. the final user. It's something that, uh, well, if we were going to, to well, uh, the first thing is that we need to have a replacement uh, command in order to do this, mm -hmm. to be uh, to, to be sure that we want to reuse the, the ID, okay? And uh, I think that this is something that, uh, well, if the user um, uh, issues the command with, I want to replace this OSD, OSD with this new one, uh, um, if uh, the, the disks are in different uh, computers, in different nodes, that is not going to be possible, but the operation is going to be uh, uh, executed. So. Is something that uh, well the, the the user can try to do, but uh, is something that uh, well is, internally is is going to be uh, detected if it is possible or not. So it's clear. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There shouldn't be a reason to need to use the same OSD ID on another node. It, it's okay yeah. if that happens, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds good. So project management tags to group functionality demos. Um, yes. Uh, this me also. This yep. is because well, well, I think that well, I have been uh, checking the the project, the orchestrator project, in in Redmine in, in the theft tracker. Okay. And I think that uh, it's very difficult to to find out what functionality, what features are implemented in what moment, okay? And uh, for example, to know, uh, well, traditionally we have divided the functionality between day zero, day one, day two, okay? In order to the things that the user can can do, okay? For example, this kind of uh, of division of is is not clearly it's not uh, possible to to find uh, what features are in in what area in what area, and a part of that, for example, for uh, 
how is this? Uh, well, what, what is the functionality that is related to all the OSDs? Or for example, more important or more useful with uh, services like uh, RTW or for example, for file system, I want to know what is the functionality that we have implemented, for example, for RGW. Well, in this moment, we have only these features, okay? This is something that is difficult to, well, you, you need to go feature by feature, reading and, 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 and understanding what, what, what is in each feature in order to uh, sort um, the, the different uh, items. So I think that it would be it would be nice to to have tax for this. It's just to comment. Another thing that uh, I think that is Sorry, important. And this is this applies yeah. to Redmine, the step tracker. Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't have any comments on that. I haven't used Redmine much, honestly. But others may have more thoughts on that. How to add tags or something. In that, uh, well, we need to, to improve a uh, lot of things here in the project area because, uh, well, for me, I, I have trying to to have a, a, a general idea about what, what is the current state and it's difficult to, to understand what things are done and what uh, uh, what percentage of, uh, of, the, of the feature, of the complete functionality is done. So I think that uh, we can, uh, but it's just an idea and I will try to, to implement. I think that, uh, well, no. Yeah, we can check with, check with Sage. Maybe Sage has an idea on, on those tags. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will comment on it, with, with it. And apart of that, it will be nice to, to have uh, demos of the functionality. I think that, well, we can start to, not for all the things that we do, but I think that it's important if we finish uh, one feature, well, it's good to, to have a, a, a small demo of the, of the feature in order to show all the people how it works, okay? And to, well, to allow people to, to, to make suggestions. And this is all from my part, a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, we usually have time at the end of this meeting. If, if someone wants to show a demo, I think that, that'd be, that would be helpful to see what's happening. And what's working? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. The rest of the comments look like they're from Sebastian with around Ceph ADM. The, um, does anybody want to go over those that, that's more familiar with Ceph ADM? Pause and suspend. Incompatible YAML changes. Um, yeah, I'm just not sure about these for points of discussion. Anybody? Uh, I mean, I can try. I mean, Sage and Sebastian are going to know this much more than I will. So I can give you like a quick one sentence on like what each one of those is. But great. Go for it. Great. Go for it. Okay, cool. Uh, pause and resume. Um, so Sage wanted a way that, you know, if you're using your cluster, you like it moves services around between nodes and stuff, and you want to be able to like pause the cluster if you want to like manually intervene, if you want to move a monitor from one node to the other or something manually. If you do that while it's already in the state of moving manage monitors around, and then just try to move it right back. So a way to like pause the cluster so you can manually move things around. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any do you want to get comments on that or no? Okay, it's not like a good thing. Yeah, okay. Um, the next one, incompatibility of to and from YAML changes. There was just some like functional things that are called like to JSON and that also work with YAML. So I think they're just changing names around of what functions do. Um, minor things. Uh, Ceph ADM refreshes the Ceph comp for all the demons. That's self-explanatory, that's good. Um, not sure about the next one, to be honest. App armor abstractions on SUSE. And then the last one, the Ceph ADM shell will work. So uh, currently, when you deploy Ceph AM, it just pulls the uh, Ceph image, whatever the latest one is. Um, you can manually like specify a specific image you want. But then when you run the Ceph ADM shell command to open up the shell so you can interact with Ceph, 
still pulled the same image in, the master image up. So they wanted to be able, so if you configured your cluster to use a specific image, it will then, when you run the CFADM shell command, also use that same if CF image. Yet again, just another good thing. That's all. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All righty. Um, Thank you. Any other comments on CFADM related items? I think we're good for now. All My right. only other thing was that, like, I agree with Juan Miguel. If we could have some sort of Trello or Jira, or I don't, even if we can do this in the Ceph tracker to like show day one, zero, one, two, three, and like separate them, who's working on what, like what's done, what's been completed, the demos thing, all that would be super helpful. I mean, I know that's not really like, I don't know, this is on stage with Sebastian. I feel like they need to make these decisions, but I don't know. That would be helpful from my perspective as well. Yeah, well, I think that we can we can improve a lot of things uh, in this area, okay? Just to, to start to the things and that's all. Yep, it's all good. Sounds good. And then last item in the agenda we have is from Ben on bare metal perf questions. Ben, are you with us? Yeah. All right. So thank you. Uh, it will take long. I just wanted to get your opinion on uh, how to proceed. Uh, we're starting to test, the Perpent scale team is starting to test um, OCS on bare metal machines. Finally, we've gotten through a lot of our problems with, o with OCP installs and so forth and starting to get some significant scale. And some of the features that we used to have with traditional Ceph, I'm not seeing yet how you do those things with OCS on bare metal. And so I wanted to get your opinion on it. I've got a couple of examples of that. Um, so for example, with traditional Ceph, you typically could use multiple NIC ports. Uh, for example, you could have a public network NIC uh, and also a cluster network NIC where you could do the replication traffic on a separate network. Um, OCP supports a thing called Multis that allows you to do a similar thing, but I haven't yet seen that with OCS. And I was wondering if anybody has tried it or knows anything about how to do it, and sh or if not, I mean, do they understand the need for it? Yeah, good question. I mean, Seb has, has tried out Multis, um, but, the, but right now, I work in OCS don't sort of configure it natively or work with it natively. So you'd need to you know, specify a ceph.conf through Rook to pick up whatever settings you want for that private or public network. So you can put them on different subnets. Um, yeah, we have hosted working. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Oh, sorry, I just said, uh, yes, the change on the Ceph config, on the Ceph config plus uh, enabling host networking. Yeah. So you think that Ceph basically do, is able to do it today and it's just a question of yes. how to plummet into OCS. All right. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, um, yeah, and the thing is that if it, because it's not implemented in OCS, then even if you change, because we use a config map for uh, extra Ceph config options we want to add, but because uh, OCS will reconcile events uh, on on that config map, if you update it to change the Ceph config, then it will just be deleted and reset to the previous state. So if you use OCS, then you won't be able to enable uh, well, that option to do uh, network segregation with host networking. What does OCS oh. reconcile that config map? Uh, I would have hoped it didn't, but I guess I'm not sure. I would hope it would, but. <laughs> <laughs> Since right, the this is exactly what I thought. Yeah. So is yeah, there a right. way to put yeah, something yeah. in an OCS CR that specifies that you want, you know, to use both NIC ports? Uh, no, not at the moment. You would have to use straight Rook to get more control. Right, that's what I thought. 
So that's that's one example of things where we're we're starting to try to push for some of those changes. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we were right about this stuff. Um, so do you for, know which config map we're talking about, by the way, or do you want to link to that? Do you have anybody have an example of one or? Yeah, I was just looking up a link from the Rook Docs so you can know where those config override settings are. Um, so I've, I've done Ceph config. I've done Ceph.conf overrides, if that's what you're talking about. But is this yeah, something that's, different? No, that's just the same one. Okay. That's all. <clears throat> all right. So, I mean, another area is uh, for all flash configurations, typically need to have more than one OSD per NVM device. And I know the Crimson people are working on fixing that, but at, at the present time, that's my understanding. And uh, again, with Rook, I think you can specify that. Um, but as far as I know, that's with right. OCS, you cannot. Is that true or not true? Does anybody know if that's true? That's, yeah, OCS doesn't expose that. Um, I'm also thinking if, you know, if we're using PVs, I think we're not, ex oh, I'm not sure, I have to double check. Because when we're using PVs with the storage class device sets, um, we might need a setting that exposes that multiple OSDs per device setting. It might be working already. No, we don't have it. No, yeah. we don't have it. It it might come for free with the config settings, the way we've got the config set up on OSDs. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure though. I, I think what's happening. No, because it's a different code path. And you, you can't really access it. So like the uh, non OSD per well per OSD uh, I forgot the name of the the flag in this yard, but this won't be interpreted. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that when they they've made a switch in OCS to use the local storage operator to acquire hard basically storage hardware, and there's good reasons for doing that. But it sort of gives up a level of control that we used to have with Rook in terms of you could set up the underlying devices, you know, with certain volumes or whatever, and it would all be there and you could just plug into that. But now you have to kind of get the, you have to do it in this new way. And I don't believe that's set up um, at present, but I, again, I could be wrong because it's all changing. Right. Well, with the, with the local storage, yeah, you configure the PVs. And we basically just have documentation right now with how to do that, set it up on the devices you want to expose, and then tell Rook how many of them you want to consume, or tell OCS, and then it passes it on to Rook. And, but yes, you lose a little of that, the specific nature of being able to um, define exactly which devices. So it's setting up the PVs in advance, but the new thing. Right. So that's one area, that's another area where I'm going to try to see if we can kind of get that back. Because um, I, I think both of the things I've talked about so far, I think are really critical for bare metal performance. They may not be as important in the public cloud, but if you want to have a bare okay. metal. Right. Um, and then the last one is for HDD. Um, we always used to use SSD devices to store the uh, write ahead log in RocksDB for the OSDs. And again, I, they switched to this local storage operator and there's these storage device set things. And I'm not clear on how you use those to do the same thing or if you can do the same thing. Does anybody aware, know anything about that? Yeah, you can actually do this if you use PVCs. Uh, with local storage, but uh, and I think it's in the doc also somewhere again. But the downside of that is you will have to pass a world device. Like uh, when I say a world device, you, you you will have to consume the entire device that is being passed. Uh, so because that's the way the implementation works today. Uh, unless you have a really small device, uh, you won't be able to uh, to get just a small amount, just a piece of that storage, and use it as a backing device for for the OSDs. 
So that's that's the the downside at this point. We are working on changing this, but I hear you, uh, uh, Ben, because we we have been working on this like for quite a while now. I know uh, performance wise and how to get the right setup. And and this might be a little bit frustrating, and I hear you, is that all the things we used to do and all the tweaks uh, we used to implement uh, with this whole new uh, Kubernetes, cloud native things, it's like we're starting everything from scratch again. Mm -hmm. So before we get there, uh, we will have to wait for a month. And I know it's frustrating because um, like we... We are just back to a simple setup, like, okay, one drive per OSD and it's an HD, right? Which is not so appealing when you do per metal and when you bought super expensive hardware to get the best out of it. Um, so right now it's, um, it is, uh, well, that's how things are, I guess. Well, I was just trying to kind of, I, I know, I understand. And I, I'm just trying to make people aware that, that this is going to be a problem, I think, when, if a customer tries to deploy with this stuff, and that we we may not have the answer today, but I was just trying, hoping that there was some movement towards getting getting it solved for those three cases. There are uh, definitely, definitely, it, it is really something we 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 want to uh, to fix uh, at least this year, I believe. So yeah, we are not letting you down on this one, and uh, we are. It is like phase two. Well, the support is there. It's just that the implementation has to be a little bit smarter, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it's we're, we're moving toward that goal uh, for sure. All right. Um, you know, I'll probably follow. I may follow up into a more individual level with some email. Try to make sure I understand. You know where yeah, it's at. Yeah. But but I just wanted to get your opinions, and that's that's all that's for now. Good. Yeah. If you want to set up a meeting sometime too. It might be good to talk through in some more detail around OCS and bare metal. Uh, who, who would you think going should on be? Area. Where do you think that meeting would be, or who would we talk to, or in your opinion? I mean, Seb and I definitely. I mean, there's a couple of OCS guys that have been working on local storage. That would like Jose would be interested in those discussions. Um, so, yeah, is there an existing honest, meeting that that I could just sort of uh, try to get on the agenda, or maybe may, maybe I think that uh, on Thursday we have the OCS operators virtual team meeting, okay? And there is much more people from uh, working directly with OCS, OCS. So I think that maybe is is the right place. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah do, you I the, can, do you see the OCS calendar? Ben? I'm yes. sorry, I don't think I have it just because I'm in a different organization, sort of. Uh, but uh, right. Thursday, let's see. No, I don't have it. It's, it's Thursday, one hour before this one. Okay. So at 10 a.m. All right, I'll try to get them. I'll try to get some meeting info and if I can talk about it there. But thank you. That's that's. All. I just wanted to get it going a little bit. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Hey, Sebastian. Welcome. Yeah. Hey, folks. Caught us. So I missed the Woom meeting? <laughs> we, we were just finishing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, yeah, we didn't have anyone really focusing on Ceph ADM here to talk through those, but um, mm. Daniel gave us a good overview of, of his thoughts on it. Um, and... Yeah, do you want to go back over some of the things on your mind? Um, maybe the um, the first Ceph Developer Summit on uh, next week, actually. Next so, yes. I think you have seen the other pad. We need to schedule a session uh, for the orchestrator plans for Pacific, including Rook and Ceph ADM. That's yeah. going to be on uh, March. 25th, and we need to schedule a, a jungle, a, a blue jeans session for it. Um, mm -hmm. And I need to coordinate it with Lens uh, because we have to. We have two meetings: one for the dashboard, which is going to be EMEA only, um, 
Probably. And one for the August traders, which is going to be EMEA plus um, US. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have to coordinate it with Lens, and we have to, and then I'm going to present you hopefully a new, um, uh, a new link for for the developer summit session. Yeah, and that's. Yeah, that sounds good. If you want to put it on the calendar, that. Uh, personally, I may be out next week. I'm not sure yet, mm -hmm. but I'll try to make it if I'm not. Okay. Any questions for me? Was that ADM or general stuff? The, okay. And then I don't, I don't, I don't want to mm -hmm. hold you up. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, one comment. Um, did you see that? So we, in Rook, we created the uh, Python client repo, and that's moved over now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's I need to make to use of it. All the history. Yep. So it should be good to go. Yep. I think that's it for me. And uh, Sebastian, I, we can we can talk or we can I can send you an, an email. It's about to include tax uh, uh, in order to, to divide the different functionality, the different features between, between uh, groups of functionality. Okay, I will explain you to you. Okay, and I think um, that. Uh, so I, I I didn't understand it quite. So what what do you mean by tax? Or do do we want to just move it over to email or to, to it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it is tax or another method. Okay. The important thing is that uh, I think that it, it would be nice to to have the different features uh, grouped in some way um, in a, in functionality groups. For example, uh, when we talk about uh, orchestrators, we have divide the functionality traditionally. They, they zero, they one, they two, okay? And mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a lot of features in this moment in the red mine, uh, in the project, the theft tracker uh, project, okay? But uh, it's very difficult to know uh, what degree of completion, of completion we have in each uh, of, of these groups, okay? For example, if I want to know what is the current state of the RGW uh, functionality, I need to go uh, feature by feature, back by back, in order to 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 have a a, a complete vision of the current state for this functionality. No. Okay, right no? now you can look at this one. Yeah. Okay. Um. That's needs okay. improvement. Um, yeah. But actually, at least it's the first way to actually have a look at uh, the, the issues. Um, to, to be honest, we have, um, I think we have about 90 issues at uh, overall, 80 issues. So if you just have a look at all issues, then uh, that's, that's all we have tracked right now. So I've tried to incorporate everything that Paul um, mentioned to Sage last week. Um, I've tried to incorporate everything that um, Patrick mentioned to me last week. Um, I've tried to incorporate everything that um, I discovered and that we have um, discussed in the in the stand-ups. Um, if you have anything that's missing, feature-wise, what you what you need. Then what? please well, I, either the, reach the, out to, to, the, to me or to the thing, Yes, well, this is a, a first thing. Okay, we can we can search in the test of the issues or in the text of or the box. Okay, I think that the, this is possible and can give us an, an idea. Okay, but for example, mm -hmm. uh, functionality that is required uh, for Nautilus. Uh, no, sorry, for Octopus in RGW uh, functionality. 
Um, do, do, do you mean Rook or do you mean Ceph ADM? Or do you mean orchestrator interface? Orchestrate, or, or, orchestrator. What, what is the functionality that we need in, in all these things? Because, for example, we don't, uh, this is part of the, of, the, of the things that I think that we need in the, in the project, or I, at least I, I haven't got this information, okay? For example, on the question that I have, uh, the, I have uh, 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 rise. Uh, if I want to know what is the things that we mm, we need to implement in in Octopus for RGW, there is any way to 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 know this this uh, this information? So in in a way, the orchestrator is very limited compared to what is actually available in Rook. Mm -hmm. It doesn't uh, matter because what um, I think that um, the first thing that we um, need to do is to have clear what is the functionality that we are going to need in the orchestrator, okay? And when I mean, uh, when I say orchestrator, what I am saying is the orchestrator with Thef ADM or with Rook, it doesn't matter. But um, this is something that we are going to need, for example, in Octopus, to have uh, working uh, to allow the dashboard to do this operation, okay? This is the kind of things that uh, uh, I think that in this moment is, is, is very fussy, okay? We have yes. functionality and a lot of features, a lot of bugs, but um, what is um, the things that uh, we really need for Octopus in this area of features, for example, RGW, for example, file system, for example, uh, objects. Do you, do, you, do you understand what, what I mean? So yeah. probably we should define these, these, uh, these targets, okay? And then group all the features and all the books around these uh, targets. Mm -hmm. and, so um, you're right. You're right. Um, the, the, the one one problem is of of course that uh, the the feature set of the orchestrator interface is kind of defined by Ceph ADM at this point. And but, but, as the development is is really ongoing, it's kind of hard to actually define what needs to be there. Um, I I can go over the interface and tell you what is the feature yeah. set of the orchestrator interface. Um, I, 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 I can do also do, it, do, do the same, <laughs> Sebastian. Okay. I can go through the interface and, and check on what things are, are implemented that were, uh, what are not, okay? But in this mm. moment, there is nobody with uh, a, a clear idea of what we need to do for Octopus in this area of functionality. This is what I mean, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think that it could be nice, well, to have a meeting, even a set of meetings, in order to define this very clearly. And, and then try to organize the project around these areas of functionality. And um, the, the target, I think, that the, should be that if I want to know what is the current status in for RGW, uh, we, have, we should have a, a percentage of 80% or 20 bucks uh, pending and three, four features pending, okay? This, this kind of things. Um, there is actually, um, we, we do have something. Uh, we do have something. Um, Self manager demon. Uh, that's right, a module. Here, yeah. current implementation status. Um, th this is a very high level overview about what is implemented in, in, in the Ceph or what is available in the Ceph orchestrator interface. Um, this is of course, just a check mark, right? Um, so you you can what what we need to do is actually make it much more um, detailed. Like um, 
creating RGWs, updating RGWs, uh, supporting um, m multiple zones, uh, multi-zone uh, deployments. So, so each feature, like um, months or stuff like that, needs to be uh, spread out into the whole set of functionality that is exposed by the orchestrator interface. But yes, you're it. right. Right now, we don't have it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's let's start to do to do that. Okay. It's not. Uh, it's just to uh, see how we can improve this, and if it 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 if this has sense. Okay. It's something that I have found when I have started to try to 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 see the project, the whole project. Okay. Mm. And uh, I, I think that uh, it could be uh, good for everybody. Okay. So. Mm. Uh, I, I I I can start to 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 propose things and to suggest things and uh, of course if uh, everybody is interested in that we can participate all together. I, I think this is going to be mostly a documentation effort. Yes, probably. To document probably. what what is actually available in the orchestrator interface. Um, yes, but but this should be uh, completely linked with the project, okay? Because it's something that I think that we need in order to 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 realize in what point of completion we are in each moment, okay? So I think that it's important to know if uh, we are far away or really near of uh, having one functionality working and tested, okay? Mm. And yes, is uh, we can start with documentation, but this should be linked with the project. My, my mm. opinion. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let Let's uh, postpone it for now. I think I think we are clear. Or, or, or at least I know. I think I know. I what what you actually mean. Yeah. Okay, I I well I think that I can propose uh, several things. Okay, so let's see mm -hmm. if we can improve this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's clearly missing from the documentation. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, I think I don't want to hold you up any longer. Is there anything else? No. Okay. Right. Then. See you next week. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.